Hey everyone, welcome back to Ontario Gardening. Today we are going to be talking about using a garden planner. I'm just going to go over quickly how I use mine, the benefit of using it, and uh, take you along that journey. Sorry about the dirty table, I'm at my craft table right now. So, I bought this off Amazon, it was about $8.00. This is last year's garden. So basically this book gives you a graph like paper so that you can plan out your garden. And then it does daily garden tasks. So what I do is I write down, this is my indoor seed starting charts. So last year I wrote down the date, what I started, and then in the notes section I put whether it worked well, whether it didn't, um, so like for, um, the onions, I'm only going to start from sets moving forward or for the cucumber sowed well outside. So yeah, it just really, um, kind of illustrates a timeline for you and helps you stay organized as to when to start your seeds inside. So that continues on for a couple pages and then it just talks about notes there's your garden journal and then any other notes that you may have it has an actual calendar so you could put um, the calendar of what you're doing it only has one so like one month I would recommend doing the month that you're actually planting because um, then you can write in that you know you don't you might not plant every single day or sorry all your things in one day so you might want to do onions one week and then your carrots the next week and whatnot and then here you just have project project to do's and the tasks and whether you completed them or not so it's a pretty good journal for eight dollars I mean it gets the job done so here is this year's so I've got the summer 2022 up at the top here and I actually on the back I'm going to do um, sorry on another page because I'm doing a fall garden this year I did a fall garden last year but I didn't actually document it this year I'd like to actually document my fall garden so I just have a better idea of um, what works well and what doesn't so again I put everything on here what I'm doing in the actual garden, what I'm doing in my grow bags, what I'm doing in my green stock planter. I have a herb ladder that I do. So I really like to, I put the garlic in between the rows. So I really like to um, have it mapped out and do it that way. And this way I can companion plant and I can um, do crop rotation. So just to quickly go over what that is companion planting I just printed off this chart from the internet and basically the theory is that some plants do better beside other plants and some plants do worse beside other plants and it's not necessarily the plant itself that doesn't do well basically it's to keep pest and disease under control so if you're planting um for example, tomatoes, which can get blossom and rot and blight beside another plant that is susceptible to blossom and rot or blight. It's better if you don't plant those two things together and like separate those in the garden. So it's not the end of the world. I didn't start companion planting until a couple of years ago. I honestly just planted anywhere and anywhere that I had space at our old garden at our old house. It's so again, like you don't have to follow this, but it is, it is good to know um, what plants do well beside other plants. And this chart that I just found on the internet, there's many of them out there. It'll tell you. So like it tells you here that carrots do well beside beans, cabbage, chive, garlics, but they don't do well beside dill. So do some research about companion planting. Companion planting also is really good in terms of flowers with your vegetables. So it is said that borage, if you plant some borage by your tomato plants or marig marigolds by your tomato plants, it basically attracts the bugs to eat the flowers instead of eating your plant. So they definitely, if when you're looking up companion planting, look up flower companion planting as well because there are many things that you can plant with your vegetables to deter pests and that sort of thing. So I definitely recommend checking out companion planting. So the other thing to think about when you are doing your garden journal up, besides the 
um, companion planting is crop rotation. So this one is a little bit more important, I guess. Um, so when you are looking at cropping, sorry, doing crop rotation, you are looking at what you planted in one spot last year versus what you're going to plant in that same spot this year. So for example, um, you don't want to plant um, a brassica in the same spot that you planted a brassica last year. And this, there's a couple reasons for that. The first reason is your soil health. So there are plants and uh, certain vegetables and fruits that are a lot heavy feeders and take out a lot of nutrients out of the soil versus some other plants. And so if you have something that's been sitting in the soil that has sucked up all those nutrients and sucked up all everything out of that soil, you want to put something in it next year that is not going to take as much from that soil. Because if you try to put something in there that's going to keep trying to suck from that soil, eventually the soil is going to run out of nutrients to give. Now we do get, we do amendments and add some organic fertilizers and stuff. But it's just really better for the soil health and for your soil to try and um, feed those plants if you're not putting too heavy feeders back to back. The other thing is, um, if you had any disease or pests in that spot with that plant the year before, so for example, we'll use the tomatoes again. If I had tomato hornworms and um, blight and blossom end rot on my tomato plants last year, I don't want to put those a new set of tomatoes in that same soil because there is a chance that those hornworms are festering in that soil and they're going to come back up and start, you know, eating my tomatoes again. Or there could be blossom end rot or different diseases that were bacteria that were in the soil left over and they're going to take over my plants again. So you really just don't want to plant the same thing in the same spot two years in a row. It can be done. Um, you know, if you do have like two light feeders, so if I put a cucumber in, in one spot and then uh, I could put a cucumber again in the next spot, it's not to say that it can't be, it's just to say that really be mindful of that and do your research on what is what vegetables are heavy feeders and which ones are lighter feeders and just try and rotate through them if you can. So that's what I really pay attention to. So I'm companion planting as well as moving things around. So like last year I had my onions down at this end of the bed and this year I'm going to be doing tomatoes. And you know it's the same thing. I had my lettuce and zucchini up here. Um, this year I'm going to put my zucchini at the ends of the beds and I'm going to do beans because beans are a super light feeder um, and I took all of that from the soil last year. So yeah, I just wanted to come in here and kind of put that in there um, and just kind of talk about that. The other good resource I have when using your garden journal is if you head over to Johnny's Seeds, um, you can also check your almanac as well, but I really found this helpful. If you go onto johnnyseeds.com and you type in your expected last frost date, you can find that on your almanac based on your zone. So I am zone 5B and my last frost date um, is in and around um, May 2-4. So that's a general rule of thumb. Um, and it's going to tell you right in here when to plant things or when to start things inside and when to plant them outside. So for example basil. So it's telling me that I should start it six weeks before my frost date. So to start it inside April around April 19th and then I can plant it outside around May 31st. So this is a pretty good tool. I generally plant things around May 2 for anyways but this is an awesome tool. So I just went through and I highlighted everything that I'm putting in my garden this year and this is exactly what I transferred onto here to say, um, so for example, peppers. It's telling me to start eight weeks before, so around April 12th. So here in my um, notes, I've got April 12th. Now, not every single day, like um, if, you know, it's telling me to start okra April 26th. Well, I work April 26th, so I might not start it exactly April 26th inside. It's, this is just a guide. So, you know, if you start it, your seeds inside, a week or two before or a week or two after it's not going to be the end of the world it's just a general rule of thumb a general guideline to help you so 
yeah, I went through and I highlighted everything that I was doing. So the numbers that have two beside it, that's my second garden. So that's my fall garden. I won't be planting stuff like kohlrabi until fall. So I adjusted that. So this is going to look different. So it's telling me four to six weeks. So I started March 15th. Well, I'm not going to be starting it till inside until August to put out into September. So that's just a little. But anyways, great resource. Um to go along with your book. So again, this year I've got my garden for this year. I've got everything that I am doing and I have actually utilized my notes this year because I wanted to keep track of the varieties that I'm trying. So funny story, um, in 32 years, I had never really, I didn't really like tomatoes. I had never tried a good tomato. I don't only ever try them from the grocery store. They were really yuck. Well, last year I tried for the first time, we went to a farmer's market and I tried an heirloom tomato. What a difference. I now like tomatoes and I want to try a bunch of different kinds. So I went crazy, bought a probably 25 different varieties of tomatoes but I only have room in my garden to grow 8 to 12 so I've copied down which ones I'm going to try this year so I'm going to make notes underneath whether they worked well whether they were good whether we liked them how they grew were they susceptible to any pest or disease and then next year I can decide whether I want to grow those again or whether I want to try new ones so Again, I can link this down below. There's many different garden planners out there. I just found this one was really, really helpful and it was really like clear, clear cut, easy to use. So yeah, that's the benefit of garden planning. I highly suggest if you can sit down, it's one of the fun things to do in the winter time while we're waiting to get out there and garden is to dream about the garden and, and get ready to plan and just have fun with it. So I definitely encourage you if you can or if you want to even if you take a scrap piece of paper and jot some stuff down like definitely consider thanks for watching next time we're gonna actually make a bird seed ring um, for feeding birds right now in the winter in our snowy area and I want to do it do a do-it-yourself bird seed wreath and we're gonna try that next time thanks for joining us talk to you later bye